everybody, I was just sitting here practicing for a couple of gigs I have coming up this weekend, but then I thought I should probably mention a couple of things before you watch this video. In the video, I tell you to be certain to let the adhesive dry completely clear before you install your first plank. As we're installing the planks, you will see little patches of white here and there. That is actually dried paint on the floor. That is not the adhesive. The next thing is you need to be certain to use the properly notched trowel. The glue bucket itself should have a label on it that will indicate what size trowel you need to use for your particular application. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, everybody, Bill and Deb here with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. Fourth of July is just around the corner. Uh, it's a special occasion for us because what happened on the 3rd of July, sweetheart? We got married. We got married on the 3rd of July. How many years ago? 47. It'll be <laughs> 47. So uh, July 3rd, which is Tuesday, will be our 47th wedding anniversary, right? Yeah. Can you believe it? Nope. <laughs> Only old people have been married 47 Only years. Only old people have been married 47 years. Okay. Well. I'm not old. <laughs> well. <laughs> I always told her that uh, the reason why I, cho I chose her <clears throat> was because I knew she had potential. So. Mm -hmm. But uh, we all also like to tell everybody that I was nine and she was eight when we got married. Now, I don't think people buy that anymore. Now it's seven and six. Is it seven and six now? Yep. Seven and six. <laughs> it was an arranged marriage. <laughs> uh, I don't think we can take it that far. No, okay, fine. I don't think we can take it that far. Anyway, what we're fixing to do today, we're going to install the flooring. And what we're going with, and I know that a lot of you already know this, but uh, that is really my true background is the flooring industry. I'm 65 years old now, and I started out in the flooring industry when I was 18 years old. I went on my own as an installer in 1972, was it? One. One, really? Shortly after we got married. Yeah, shortly after we got married, I went on my own as an installer. I was an apprentice for, oh... Technically speaking, I really started when I was 17 uh, as a helper and went on my own shortly after we got married. So I was a, a helper slash apprentice for a little over a year or so. But, you know, flooring industry has changed a lot since the early 1970s. And there's been products along the way that I didn't care anything about based on my background. And there's been other products that I've been very, very excited about. And I've never been a big fan of carpet, although that was my, my first, uh, first flooring experience was installing carpet. Of course, that's about all they had back in the 70s. I even remember when we did rubber back carpet in kitchens. And then just uh, a year or two later, we were going in and scraping it all back up and putting vinyl down. But on to what we're fixing to do here. My favorite type of product is what they call, and I get, let me get my hammer set here, right? I'm still learning how to use this GoPro. I'm getting better anyway, but I'm still learning. Anyway, I got my favorite product, and I really latched on to this long before other folks did, is what they call luxury vinyl plank. And Deb is holding a piece of it in her hand. This is what we're going to be putting on the floor in here uh, today. And we're going to show you basic uh, install techniques that I use to do this. Um, now there's several different types and this is a 100% urethane type product and then you've got the click clack we call it the type that clicks together with a click mechanism those are also so the newer ones are all 100% urethane products I am from the old school I prefer the glue down product in this particular one you glue directly to the floor now the main reason why we chose this one is because we like the color it goes with our decor because we're going to do a mixture as you can see by the color of the walls and then you see the the pine window frame that was in our last video uh, right behind Deb this is going to go with our basic decor of the uh, uh, nostalgic teal tones that I like to call it and then the knotty pine look and then this flooring will go along with it this particular one 
is actually rated commercially. It's a little more expensive than your basic one. It's got a 15-year commercial wear warranty, is that right? It has a 15-year commercial wear warranty. It is 20 mils thick. Yeah, the wear layer surface yeah. is 20 mils thick. Yeah. You know, and you'll see some out there in the residential applications that are, you know, what, 5, 10, 12 um, mils thick, uh, yeah. somewhere in that ballpark. Your, usually your cheaper ones. 12 is usually but, your less expensive ones. You know, yeah. in a residential, those are fine. Oh, yeah. And that's what I was getting ready to say next. You don't have to go with one this heavy. And, you know, we just went with this mainly because of the color. Uh, it goes real well, and it's, you know, it just so happens to be a commercial rated product. But a regular residential rated product will will perform every bit as good if you plan if you decide to go this route in your conversion. So that that's the main thing there. Now this particular one is called what's the name of it again? It's made by Primo Flores, F L O R Z, Primo Flores. Uh, this particular one is the Wilmington series. Okay. And the color that I chose, it's available in six different colors, but the color I chose is called Rustic Maple. Rustic Maple, mm -hmm. okay. Because it goes good with my Naughty Pine. <laughs> they can't, well here, do that again. Goes good with your Naughty Pine, there, now they can see it. I had to, <laughs> you caught me off guard there. Sorry. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> anyway, we're really excited about the product. We also used this in our motor home and it worked out real well. And there was no question as to how we were gonna go. When we uh, when we decided to uh, choose our flooring for in here because it fits with our favorite colors and everything that we're going with, um, we're going to post a link to the product itself. Now I don't believe this particular one. I don't believe you can get it at Home Depot or uh, Lowe's or places like that. We got it through Flooring America because that's who we uh, who we are associated with. This particular company only sells through distributors. Right. So it has to be through your local dealer. Whoever yes. happens to our particular company, Flooring America, bought it from Brandon Company in Arkansas. But a lot of other distributors handle the product. Yeah, it's available so. through a, a wide variety of distributors, but 99.99% of the time, the average consumer cannot buy directly from a distributor. You'll have to go right. to a regular retail outlet so but it is available you know throughout the country so my suggestion would be if you like this product and everything and you wanted to consider it for your conversion that you go to your local flooring retailer probably not home depot or lowe's I, they probably won't even know what you're talking about of course they'll end up trying to sell you something else which is fine that's what they're supposed to do but if you really really like this product and you want to really look into it and <laughs> it'll probably the flooring will probably still be there when the trailer falls apart you know that's just the way that of course i'm trying to build a trailer so it'll never fall apart but yeah, anyway i know it's got to last us it's got to last us a while doesn't it it's got to be part of the yeah. plan for yeah. a while and <laughs> what we're going to do here in a minute we're going to shut down this one and this clip and start up a new clip which you'll see here you know right after this one and we'll show you how we're installing it and the basic things that we did and there's a few key points that i want to be sure and bring out that you need to keep in mind when you're installing this product if you glue it direct to the floor and i'll point out the few little things that some folks don't consider if you glue it direct to the floor oh yeah you while. yeah while you glue it to the floor <laughs> thank you before we move on there's one thing i do want to say about this product we have had it acclimating and i'll go over here and show you here we call this acclimating we have had it acclimating in the trailer uh, actually for several days now they recommend that you acclimate it to whatever area you're going to be installing it in for at least 24 hours ahead of time it needs to adjust to the temperatures and humidity and all kinds of things in your particular area that you're going to be installing it one thing i do want to recommend uh, as far as doing a conversion don't attempt to do this in the winter time or during cold temperature times unless if you are absolutely guaranteedly unless you are well, that's a new word absolutely, absolutely no. certain <laughs> that you can have your trailer maintaining at least 70 degrees inside for 24 hours before you install the product and at least 24 hours preferably longer than that after you install the product we were going to install this back in october november we had a window of like three days and we didn't make that window and we're really glad that we didn't do it then now 
but uh, you know this is the middle of the summertime now so but uh, I really recommend if you consider going this route that you and you're even supposed to acclimate the type that clicks together as well you're supposed to do the same principles apply if you don't do it that way you're gonna have issues okay we're gonna move on to the next segment so we'll be back bye okay I've got everything all set up ready to glue now it's very very important first off that you have to have your floor as smooth and clean as possible we had a, a joint right over there that I wasn't real tickled with right over there so uh, we filled that a little bit with some wood filler it's not very it, it didn't have to go on very thick so I don't think we'll have any issues with that I made me a straight edge out of some scrap plywood that I had and we're gonna spread the adhesive up to that now I did shoot that with about four three quarter inch deep staples to hold it in place there and then of course when I spread the adhesive over on this side over here and then let it set and get ready to start installing my material then I'll go ahead and start installing my material and I'll have something to lay my my planks up to so I make sure they're really good and straight for that first run that I make and then we'll stack these out and trim them on the ends then after we get that done then we'll pop this uh, this straight edge piece up and then we'll spread the adhesive on the other side too many folks try to do the whole floor all at once and then they have issues trying to get everything straight uh, what happens is if you don't have each plank running perfectly straight and perpendicular with each other you end up having little gaps on your in in joints and that is not good so anyway uh, give me a second here i'm going to get in position and make sure my camera's set up just right and we're going to start spreading some glue all right here we go now by the way it just started raining and we've got a light in here hope you'll be able to see okay uh, it's just a light rain it's nothing real heavy but it sure sounds sounds good on the roof of the trailer <laughs> a little bit of thunder too now and then and uh, we got a light shining here i hope it'll work for you so i'm going to start spreading the adhesive on this side here and you'll notice there's a mark here and a mark over there i hope the shadow isn't messing it up for you that's as far as I'm going to take my glue because I'm going to have shelves over here that will come out and they'll go all the way to the floor but they will come out about 12 inches so I don't need to install plank where the shelving is going to be so that's as far as I'm going to take it is there so now we're going to spread the adhesive and here we go and you use a fairly a thin notch trowel for this stuff I believe this is like a 1 32nd but you can see how it puts it on there we're gonna make a line right there It's very important when you're spreading this adhesive that you have no blobs you try to keep your blobs down to a minimum because the blobs can leave a bump in your material when you go to install it so you try to get your adhesive as smooth as possible on the floor and first I'm just going to go ahead and run around it here I haven't spread glue in a while folks because I've been retired for a while some folks say I'm retarded <laughs> actually I'm the one that says that but I think I still got it <sighs> but like I say we try to keep the blobs to a minimum and you want to try to have it as clean as possible right up against your your straight edge piece should you decide to use anything like that I don't 
need to pry that up, it'll be it'll be okay. Now this threshold here, we took the screws out of it so we can uh, pry it up a little and tuck the material up underneath it. Pick up some of the excess there. You see I've got some blobs there. I gotta get my floor nice and clean. One secret is to get your your glue spread as as smooth as possible and don't get excited because you do have uh, a decent window of working time with this glue and we'll talk about that more here in just a little bit let's get this a little cleaner right up here I've already said it but make sure that your floor is really clean don't don't leave anything make sure there's no, no foreign material laying on your floor that could end up getting in the glue you can get it out of there and probably pick it up with the trowel but if you go to scrape off your trowel into your bucket then that junk will end up in your bucket with your glue. All right, now this adhesive goes on white in color as you can see here. Now this is where a lot of folks make a mistake. This is what they call a clear spread adhesive, and this is the type of adhesive that you use with the product that we're installing. Do not, do not lay your first plank until every bit of this dries clear. Do not install your first plank until every bit of this turns clear. I cannot stress that enough. You might say, okay, it's clear over here. There's a little bit of white still showing over there, but I'm gonna start over here and it'll be okay. I have done that before, and every time I did that, I had trouble. You do not want to start installing any planks until the entire surface that you have spread turns completely clear. If you do not do that, you could have issues with your plank sliding around. This adhesive is designed in such a way, when you wait for it to flash, and that was, that's what we call this in the business, you wait for it to flash, and once it flashes completely, once you lay that plank in, it's gonna be there. It is gonna be there. Uh, you know, it ain't gonna slide around on you. But if you try installing your planks too early, you're gonna have issues with them sliding around and your, your joints are gonna look terrible. And that's just all there is to it. Your joints will look awful. They may look okay at first, but they may slide around later because once you lay your plank into that, if it has not completely flashed where it's totally clear, there could be areas where it never does. And then you're gonna have issues with it sliding around. And I've watched a lot of videos where guys have installed the product and then they commented later a couple months down the road, well, I'm having trouble with it. It's not sticking properly, it's sliding around. Must have been bad glue, must have been this, must have been that. No you're supposed to wait until it flashes and they use a specific type of adhesive with this and wherever you go to get your material they will should be able to recommend the type of adhesive that you need to use but we're going to wait we're going to be patient and wait in fact what i'm going to do and i don't you don't need to watch me do it again but i'm going to go spread some adhesive on the other end i've set it up exactly the same way so while this is setting up i'm going to go spread the adhesive on the other end of the trailer and then we'll come back when it's time to start installing planks so we'll be back We'll be back. Okay. We started to 
show you the installation a while ago on the first part of the uh, spreading of the glue, but uh, all of a sudden the battery went dead on the GoPro, so we had to suspend that and go ahead and install that right quick and spread the other side so we could show you then. So here we are back doing that. And anyway, it's, it's really pretty straightforward. The secret, of course, is getting it tight when you lay it in there to start it. And see how that's right there, good and tight. And push it right up there, tight again. And then what I like to do, yeah, I, I really prefer to use a grout sponge, just a lightly damp grout sponge but I don't have one, didn't think about it. So I use a, took an old t-shirt, tore it in half, and then lightly dampened it. And then we just wipe it down and kind of press while we're doing it too at the same time. And now it's time to cut one. Now here, we're gonna have it go underneath this threshold a little bit. See, we got it loosened there. So what I can do, I can butt this right up against it, but I know that I'm gonna go underneath it a little bit. So when I come here, I'm gonna make a mark, oh, almost a quarter inch past this. That will allow this to go through. Then I come back here, and some people use a square, and I don't, I just kinda eyeball it. I've got to where I can cut fairly straight. And I didn't push so hard that I cut all the way through the material, as you can see. Then you can bend it like that, and then you come back and slice it with your knife. And don't be afraid to use lots of fresh razor blades. <laughs> no, don't, don't be afraid of that. Now see how nice that fits right there. Then we come back with the rag. Wipe that, clean that little excess off right there. And now, this is my cut end. So I'm gonna start with this one. I want my joints to stagger. I'm gonna slide it up underneath here and lay it right up tight against that. You've got, once the glue flashes, generally speaking, and it'll vary a little bit. It's a little bit of a variable, but you usually have roughly about 45 minutes working time for any particular area, sometimes a little bit more. A lot of it depends on the temperature, the humidity, and things like that. But generally speaking, you've got about 45 minutes working time or so uh, for that. Now we come up here, got another fresh piece. Now I can leave a little bit of a gap up here because I am gonna put a piece of trim there. So, but what I do right now, I butt it right up against it. And just to make sure I don't accidentally cut it too tight, I make me a mark roughly, oh, about an eighth of an inch short, eighth of an inch shy of this piece here. Come back over here, take your knife, and don't, re don't forget, buy a package of razor blades and don't be afraid to change them out. And then we slice it like that. Boom. Take this piece, turn it around, and get it started here. Push it right up against your joint, and then and there you go. And there's the next piece. Now, when this glue has flashed properly. <laughs> you better make sure you have this right where you want it. Now, if you just kind of lightly lay it in, you can usually peel it back off. But if you go ahead and push it down like I did with my fingers, uh, it's there. It's You're going to have a heck of a time pulling it back up. So, you know, what I would suggest is to start in, a, in an area that may or may not be all that visible, you know, so you can learn your uh, your technique on how to lay the piece in 
But if you use that straight edge method, is this piece going to work? Yeah, this will work. This is my cut edge. I'm going to slide it up underneath my threshold. If you use that straight edge method that we talked about earlier, that I showed you how I took a couple of straight boards, or a straight board, and made my reference marks on the floor, and then secured that uh, board to the floor, and that gave me a good straight line to start with. And I've harped on this before. I harped on this when we did the ceiling with the knotty pine. The most important run is those first two runs. Because if you get those first two runs off, you're going to be fighting it the rest of the job. If you get those first two runs as straight and true as possible, the rest of the job is going to go a whole lot easier. But if you don't do that, then you'll fight just about every plank. Whether you're laying hardwood, whether you're laying, installing a vinyl plank like this, whether you're doing tongue and groove knotty pine on the ceiling or the walls, it's very, very critical. The same principle applies getting that very first run as straight as can be. In fact, when I installed hardwood, Sometimes I like to go in because sometimes it takes, especially on a concrete floor, you have no way to really secure anything, you know, really good. So I would lay two or three runs or, make, you know, install like a two foot wide course, the full length of my job. And on hardwood adhesive, it takes a little bit longer for it to set up. So what I would do the first day, I would figure out my layout, exactly how I wanted to start everything out. And then I would install, um, just uh you know my first course uh, two foot wide three foot wide however and it all depended on the material i was installing and how wide the planks are and i'd install it get it all good and straight on a concrete floor and i'd go home i'd go home and let that glue set up real good overnight uh, and that way when i started laying in my fresh planks the next morning um, the glue was set up good that first course that i had installed the day before wasn't going to move so i didn't i wouldn't have any issues you know fighting it the rest of the day and i've seen so many jobs where they came in and tried to get it all done in one day which you know i could have done the same thing but i also saw where they had to take uh, stain and uh, put stain between joints because there was gaps <laughs> where the where the joints didn't come together real good and tight so then they come back with stain and stained it so the customer wouldn't see it wouldn't see those gaps or maybe wouldn't see them until after they got paid but uh, you know I was slower than the other guys but I never had any issues getting paid and uh, my jobs always look good or i tried to make sure they all looked good okay that's as far as i need to go there uh that's as far as i spread the adhesive there anyway you can see how we did it it's pretty straightforward there's not it's not rocket science folks and the main thing you want to make sure of, like i said get your first run as straight as can be and uh, once you get the first run as straight as can be everything else is going to go a whole lot easier for you but that first course or those first two pieces side by side have to be as straight as possible after that everything goes real good remember to let your adhesive flash let it turn clear if you try to install it before it has turned clear you're going to have problems there's just no two ways about it this stuff is here it's here good and solid so we don't have any issues with that and the reason why i stopped here cabinets are going to go here and the cabinets are going to come up to about right oh right in here somewhere in here so it, they're going to cover the edge of that there's no need in me putting more material back there and we're going to be mounting a lot of stuff back in here anyway so when it's all said and done and the cabinets are here and the shelves are behind me on the floor and everything it's going to look really really good all right well we're going to finish it we've got the adhesive spread on the front part we're going to go ahead and finish that and then we'll come back with a with a brief clip showing the finished job and uh, a few closing comments so we'll be back in a little bit you all take care and we'll see you in just a little bit all righty bye bye 
Okay, folks, there it is. Here's This is the back part of the trailer, which is where the, uh, the galley will be back here, of course. And remember that I didn't have to take it all the way to the wall there because there's going to be shelves coming out that will come all the way to the floor right there. And over here on this side, I didn't have to concern myself with that either because there's going to be cabinets that come all the way out there. So when it's all said and done, this is all that will be exposed here in the middle. And, of course, uh, we're going to be doing something on the bed there, painting it on the side doing something decorative there to go along with the floor and there will be a trim all along the bottom when it's all trimmed out and everything. Let's go up here to the front. It finally stopped raining. It's a little cloudy though and awfully humid but here we go. I hope the lighting is good enough so you can see it there but there's uh, we took it all the way up to the nose there. I really didn't have to take it that far because there will be a cabinet coming all the way across the front there as well. Uh, but the hot water tank will be setting right in the center of the V there. And I thought, well, that'd be a little bit more protection in case we had some leaks or something like that. And then you can see how it comes around the shower and everything right here. And uh, anyway, what do you think, dear? Oh, it's gorgeous. You like it? I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Uh, this is probably what we could call our uh, anniversary present, right? So I don't have to buy anything? Is you still that what have that to means? take me to dinner. Still have to take you to dinner? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, let's see. Tuesday. Hey, I think Sonic has uh, two for one Napoli's on Tuesday. Napoli's is open. Napoli's? Yeah, I'm sure they are. The Itali that's your favorite Italian place is <laughs> Napoli's in Rogers. <laughs> anyway. Um, well, uh, well that's, uh, that's it for on this video, folks. Hope you learned something from it. And uh, we'll be tackling another project here very shortly. Uh, I'm going to say happy anniversary to my wife, which is coming up on Tuesday, of course. Uh, by the time you all see this video, if I can get it edited and it uploaded quick enough, you might see it by the 3rd of July. We'll see what happens, but it might be after the 3rd when you see this. So anyway, uh, I'm saying happy anniversary to my, to my lovely bride, and uh, we will talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye now.